Hey everybody. Well, I'm obviously not in my car. <laughs> I'm actually in my living room and I've been putting off doing this particular vlog. I, not for any particular reason, I guess. It's just been difficult to find the time to actually arrange to do this. But today's uh, contribution to my vlog is going to be downward facing vlog. Why on earth would I do such a thing? And I will preface it before I actually get into downward facing vlog by saying this is a result of a comment from my colleague Matt Webster during um, our meetings at the beginning of the semester and I was participating in a workshop and um, I made the comment that I enjoyed yoga and Matt said, there's the idea for your next vlog. You can call it Downward Facing Vlog. All right, I've been thinking about that and here we go. So let me get into Downward Facing Vlog or Downward Facing Dog and we'll go from there. So why is this relevant? Why would you as an instructor um, consider doing such a crazy thing. Well, I'm not saying that we should, that we should do a lecture like this. It would be a little uncomfortable for starters, but this, doing this is causing my brain and my body to think in ways that are outside my comfort zone. And that's the idea, really, that we're, that we as instructors think outside our comfort zone. Because if you think about it, that's what we're asking our students to do every single day. I have students that are afraid to raise their hands, afraid to ask a question because they might sound stupid. I certainly have students who are afraid to stand up in front of the room behind a podium and give a speech. Other students are just afraid they're gonna do something wrong, uh, afraid to take a test, uh, afraid to even begin an assignment. This is outside their comfort zone. And yet we as an instructors live in this academic bubble. One of the, the sweetest jobs in the world is being a professor because we could go from the time we started until the time we retired and probably not change a thing. Well, that would be awful, wouldn't it? But there are people that do that. I'm happy to say that I'm not one of those people and I would be bored to tears my wrists are starting to hurt, so I'm going to come out of Downward Facing Dog to finish this. Challenge yourself physically, emotionally, academically, theoretically. Challenge yourselves to get outside your comfort zone. Put yourself in the position of your students. Put yourself in a position of a faculty member that wants to do the very best they can every time they go in the classroom. Don't take this job for granted. Don't take your students for granted. Push yourself. And for me, my wrists, I've recorded this six times. <laughs> you don't know that, but I have. And uh, my wrists are saying, uncle, but you know what? I'm gonna keep doing it. I'm gonna keep doing yoga. I'm gonna keep doing downward facing dog, which by the way, my yoga instructors insist is a resting position. And uh, I guess it is. The, the nice thing about it is it's an inversion and all inversions um, are good for us physically and spiritually. So start with a downward facing dog. And while you're in this position, think about what you can do differently in your classroom tomorrow and the next day and the day after that. So thanks you guys for allowing me to record my silly downward facing vlog video. And I'm gonna share with you real quickly, my buddy over here, that's Jack. Jack kind of lives his life in downward facing dog. He's a 14 year old lab and he doesn't need to change anything or think outside his comfort zone, but we do. Until next time, signing off. Namaste.